Hi everyone, welcome. Bruce Schwartz here. Sinus irritum, promontorium D at the end. Why is there a yellow color over the top of the objects or structures at the back? Why is this UFO letting off some type of yellow color? Over top of some of these structures and um, we're seeing colors and some of the colors um, are mixed in with clouds, dusts, you know, hazes and smokes. Now this UFO, which just dropped off something by the way, what we're seeing on the surface with just this UFO, the proof, when people are telling me it's satellites, still telling me, uh, with the trolls of course, that it's satellites that I'm capturing, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But for whatever the reason, uh, my channel didn't get out to others at all about, about this. I mean, the findings are incredible. I watched space stuff all my life, just waiting for UFOs and, you know, for stuff on the moon to appear, and it never did. And when I started doing the research with my telescope, it's like people never took the time to ask me exactly what I was doing. I mean, we're looking at ghostly entities. We're looking at UFOs firing projectiles on the surface, and these are just going unnoticed. If you're here and you're looking at the research, well, you're lucky and I thank you at the same time, but like I said, we're gonna be a small group to be able to view, view these uh, happenings on the surface. I started understanding that there was literally a light system on the surface, and no, it's not the sun reflecting that are making these objects uh, look uh, blinding and stuff. So we're talking about smokes, hazes, and even fires on the surface of the moon. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, people tell me, go check out Hoagland stuff. Well, Hoagland did talk about this object. Um, it, well, it wasn't mentioned where it is, so I'm going to say it. It's right beside uh, the Rima Hyginus crater. And top right, you just saw an octagonal um, crater. Now, look here what we're looking at. These are the structures that are being hidden on the surface that are going unnoticed. Same reflectivity as the surface. We're going to invert it, and you'll see by changing the way to view it, it doesn't change its shape. It changes um, the color, and for some reason, our eyes tend to pick up more on these objects. Now, this is all around um, an area where there's supposed to be craters. There they are. I got a white dot on the black object now. Those several black objects, including that triangular elongated object that I had seen. Here, we're going to pan over Mare Imbrium, where uh, Apollo 11 supposedly would have landed. Lunar waves or sonic booms. Very interesting. Scientists uh, such as as the University of Iowa physicist Jasper Halicus, for example, hope to answer this question by studying miniature shock waves on the moon. Because I want to talk a bit about that. These sonic boomlets 
physicists believe, and this is what I'm telling you what physicists are saying. They say that they're being generated by protons in the solar wind moving at supersonic sonic speeds colliding with pockets of magnetic fields that bubble up from the moon's crust. I like the way they say bubble up. Like, you know, we all say it's in water. Anyways, um, so it's interesting. But, you know, no, we, nobody understands how a magnetic field uh, that small would generate something um, we would notice, right, they say? So maybe the field, uh, magnetic field around the moon is um, generated or uh, possibly man-made or alien made, who knows, a force field. Maybe Tesla's technology is up there. Oh, Bruce, stop with the theories. I got some people complaining already about my theories. Get over it. It's, it's cool, okay? <laughs> it's cool to theorize and speculate. We don't know what's up there, ladies and gentlemen, at all. All we can do is theorize and speculate, but uh, we can do it using common sense and analyzing the facts that we were given anyways, even if we um, are coming to the understanding that some facts that we have um, given to us were given to us are not right. Um, they're finding that out themselves. I think science um, is rewriting itself uh, as it does every so many hundreds of years, right? Watch the arrow. I keep saying it, it's hard to see. Look at the lines crossing over one another. Look at the smoke that's over the lines. Everywhere where you see a line, you see smoke over top of it or a haze. It could be deliberate or it could be actual smoke coming from those pipes to either hide the surface, who knows. My belief that the moon has these constructed objects, I'm not making them up. I know thousands now are following uh, the same belief as me. And look at this, a line going into a structure, a hole inside of the ground. We can see that. I've showed it at least a handful of times. And there's more and more events and more and more findings. We're finding more and more things. This is, these are the Apennine Mountains. Lines going to and from the craters. I mean, these lines are overlapping themselves. They're very symmetrical. Sometimes there's three or four side by side. I don't believe, personally, that they are lines of ejecta. Here, a six mile long object approximately appears uh, one mile wide, crossing um, alongside a crater high off the surface, not that high off, but you know, storm high. Could it be storms also? Speculation uh, has to be something. It's something that's moving a vapor, dust, uh, smoke, or haze. We can see it really clearly over there on the right, and it's like this line with. Um, maybe an object or two inside of it. When I say object, it's like two bright lights and uh, like a cloud or mist between both of them. Very mysterious, but uh, moving on the surface. When we see this stuck up right up to Copernicus Crater, which is just on the top left of this image, that's the rim we're looking at. We look just here uh, below that pipe, um, even below the arrow on the bottom, we see what looks like a 90 degree angle. Again, you see it, but look at the massive structure right there. This is my mailing address.